Howdy, I'm Karen from Karen Don Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to work an I cord cast on. The first thing that you need to do is cast on four stitches. I'm going to use the long tail cast on, so I'm creating a slip knot, and then using long tail cast on, I'm creating three more stitches because my slip knot is one stitch until I have four stitches. Once you do that, you want to take your other needle and slip these stitches that you just cast on um, to your left hand needle and slip them purl wise so they don't get twisted. So you're just basically readjusting the location of the stitches. There you go. Once you do that, you'll notice that your working yarn is back here. And if you've worked an I cord before, you know that this is typical for an I cord. So what you need to do is just kind of give a little extra tug when you work the first two stitches. So you start by knitting into the front and back of this first stitch. So to do that, you insert your needle as if to knit. You go ahead and wrap your arm yarn for knitting. Pull the yarn through, but do not remove this stitch from this needle. Then you maneuver the needle so that it is in the back of the other needle. And then you go into the back of that same stitch and wrap your yarn to knit, pull it through, and now you can remove the stitch from your left hand needle. So you've increased by knitting into the front and the back of that stitch. After you've done that, you knit the next three stitches. So one, two, oops. Three. Once you've done that, you're going to get into a rhythm where you take four stitches and move them back to your left needle. So one, again, slip these purl wise so you don't twist them. Two, three, four. Leave this stitch on your needle. This is now you've cast on one stitch. So whatever your pattern says um, is the cast on number, you've got one. You do the same thing, you knit into the front and back of this first stitch. So knit into the front, maneuver your needle, knit into the back. Then you can take that off and then knit three. And once again, you're going to take four stitches and move them back to your left hand needle. So slip one, two, three, four. And now you have two stitches that you have cast on. Continue working in this manner until the number of stitches on this right hand needle is equal to the number of stitches that you need to cast on according to your pattern. I've now cast on a few more stitches. And so you notice these are my four stitches that are the working I cord stitches. And these are the stitches that are the number to count for your cast on. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six cast on stitches. And let's pretend that that is what my pattern told me to cast on. So the next thing you need to do is get rid of these extra four stitches because they are part of the I cord and do not count as part of your cast on stitches. So if you had already moved them over to your left needle, go ahead and put them back on your right needle. I like to move them to my left needle to count to make absolutely sure I have the right number of stitches. And then you turn your work. So this is the only time that you turn it and you bind off those four stitches. So go ahead and you can use a conventional bind off, which is what I'm going to do here. Um, or you can use some other type of bind off if you prefer. So here is binding off one, two, three, four, then go ahead and move this stitch back over to this needle. And now you see I have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. And that is the number I'm supposed to have cast on. You will notice that there is a little bit of a gap right here. 
So that is something that when you work your first row of your pattern, just give this a little extra um, tug to kind of fill up that gap. Two notes about the I-cord cast on. You'll notice that this first set of stitches right above my I-cord cast on is a little bit elongated. That is perfectly fine. So if you see that happening to your stitches, don't worry. You have not done anything wrong. That just happens with this cast on. Um, so don't worry about that. Secondly, if you are using this cast on to knit something in the round, when you join for the round, you are going to have a gap that um, that is created with your knitting. So go ahead and just work the project and then at the end, make sure you've left a tail and use that tail when you weave in the ends, just basically kind of connect this gap together and sew in the ends so that way it creates not a gap. So use that end um, and weaving in that end to remove that gap from joining in the round. But this is what an I-cord cast on looks like. And once I have blocked this project, um, the nice thing about the I-cord cast on is it helps prevent rolling for a stockinette project. So you can see that even before the blocking. Um, although it does have a slight tendency to roll, it's not as bad as just a plain stockinette edge. <laughs> 